Hello, it's Digitrex Dad, and um, look, as promised, I'll do a, a bit of a video here on the uh, Digitrex BD4, which is the block detector for four zones. I've decided just to concentrate on the detectors that Digitrex actually currently sell. They have some superseded BD1s that used to connect uh, to uh, the DS52 uh, decoder, stationary decoder, but I thought I'd just focus on the ones that they do do. So the, currently Digitrex do three um, block detectors. Now the three block detectors that Digitrex do, their most basic and oldest one is the one that we see here. This is the block detector 4, uh, BD4. Then also they do a 16 channel uh, or 16 detection section uh, board called the BDL168 which many people will be familiar with which does 16 zones and also has a loco net reporting direct which we'll get into and recently last year uh, Digitrex brought out the BXP88 which is a built-in uh, de block detector as well as a transponding uh, transceiver as well and uh, we'll cover that off in a, in a separate video so they're the three main detectors that Digitrex currently produce. The block Detector 4 or BD4 has no connection directly to LocoNet so we'll talk about that in, a, in either this video if I've got time or in a second video and that's why you see this DS64 here. To make this report onto LocoNet if you wanted to use a computer or a signalling like an SE8C for your signalling uh, or you wanted to report to LocoNet your occupancy then you need a way of doing that and connecting one of these 10 pin plugs to the sensor inputs on your DS64 is one way of doing that. Uh, what I'll do first is just show you how simple this is to set up and then uh, we'll move into the more detailed pieces. Okay, so what I've set up here is a one yard of track. So this is some CNL uh, fine scale steel track here. And what I've done is I've set it up with four zones and we'll zoom in and have a look at those zones. So you can see here the gap that I've cut in the rail here just using a Dremel tool and then I put a little piece of styrene in there just to stop the two uh, rails expanding and touching and causing a short. This is a, a rail A connection and then this is the second rail A connection and so on and that divides up there's four of those connecting to four different segments of the track and as you can see rail B has no cuts in it. To the board now and what you'll notice about the BD4 is we've got five uh, connections here four of them are for the four rail A's that we just looked at the black wires so the four separate tracks or four separate uh, breaks in the rail is, is labelled here. So you've got detection section one, two, three, and four. And this, this connection here is the connection back to the command control unit, which is your rail A over here. And that goes to, to, to the Zephyr. The most important connection though, and there's very little in the instructions about it, it's a one line in a diagram on a very brief set of in, instructions, is that uh, pin 10 on this plug here needs to go to earth or common on the uh, command station. Now to do that what I've done is use a 10 pin plug and basically cut off the 9 wires that I don't need and then place number 10 wire into the plug, crimp it down and then insert it on here. That way now pin 10 has a wire that goes here which is to is the BD4 ground and that goes off to the uh, to the DCS 50. Very important the board will not work without that so trains will run on here without that connection to earth but it's reporting or it's signaling that each section is occupied or otherwise won't work without that earth connection that common connection to the uh, command station. Now, the other important uh, tool that comes with the BD4 is this uh, block indicator, which is basically five LEDs 
one that says that any of the four is, is all receiving power and then any, each of the four blocks are, are shown by one LED to say if they've op, got an occupancy or not and that's something that draws current and I'll show you what that means. It's quite simple, it's nothing other than a resistor across the track to prove that works or a loco or something that draws some current. Now that plugs in with the LEDs facing away from the uh, terminals. It places into this 10 pin there and that comes with the with the kit if you wanted to set up a control panel that showed the occupancy with with LEDs on a control panel separate from your rail layout that's the plug that you would use and simply make yourself up a, a ribbon cable like this and uh, plug it in and then put that other end to your control panel and the wiring diagram that comes with the BD4 shows you which which pins go to which LEDs so quite simple. If you haven't already, do invest in some ribbon cable. It's a, I like the coloured one because it's easier to trace. I buy a roll of this for dollars basically off of eBay. It comes out of China. Um, get yourself a couple of rolls of it. You can't go wrong. And some, uh, some connections. It literally is dollars. I tend not to buy the Digitrex one. It's very expensive. Now let's get something onto the track and to show that the occupancy actually works. Now you'll see a lot of written literature by Digitrex that says uh, 10k ohm or 10,000 ohms is the uh, resistance that, that will uh, work for this and I find that that's true, it does work. And to show you what I've done here is set up a, a wagon with some pickups underneath it and a 10k ohm resistor on it. Now when I place this resist this on the track, it's basically drawing current from one, one wheel and onto the other wheel via the resistor. And if we power up our unit here, and I'll just zoom out so you see. So I'm going to turn on the track power now. And we'll notice that we have a light on the on the LED has illuminated now. I zoom in, you should see a green, green light there, and hopefully that comes out in in the video. And that means that we've got uh, power to the this particular BD4. Now, as I move, as I move the wagon, it is basically drawing current across the wheel set via the 10k ohm resistor. If I can keep it on the track. And you'll notice a little bit of illumination occurring in this zone, which is zone 4, and you see the LED there lighting up. You'll notice it's, it's fairly dim, and as I move it down the track into other sections, you'll see that it's illuminating, but it's quite, quite dim. So it may be enough to trigger uh, occupancy, and that's fine, but I find I'd prefer to actually draw just that little extra uh, current and it really ensure that I'm getting a solid, uh, a solid registering of occupancy. And by that, using here, I'm using a, three, a 3K3 or a 3300 ohm resistor. And you'll notice that by bridging that simply across the, the two rails, I'm getting a really nice, bright uh, indication coming up on the LED. There you go, you can see it there, nice and bright and solid. And if I move that down to another section, and another section uh, that's lighting up nice and bright. So I tend to use around about 4,000 ohm resistors on my rolling stock that doesn't have anything powered in it, uh, just to make sure that it's going to work. Now, if I put a locomotive on the track, it draws plenty of power, plenty of current, and as you notice, the LEDs here, and we'll zoom, we'll just zoom down a bit make that a bit clearer. You can see that the LED here indicating that it's in zone 4 has illuminated no problem at all. If I just move the loco manually down the track into the next section you'll notice the fade out of 4, on comes 3, move it down fades out 3 into 2 and so on down the track and then we end up into block number 1 or zone number 1. Nice and simple. Um, look, that's really it for 
getting a BD4 out of the box installed and what wiring we need. So bear in mind we need the rail A and B from our, um, from our command station. I'm just using a Zephyr, but any, any A and B coming out of any of the command stations, a DCS100, a DB150, um, the Zephyr 50 or 51, all work. And this board then with its four detection sections uh, coming from its four separated rails and then your one common rail which I've used as the red track, red wire, bring that out and into your DCS and you should be away. Biggest important uh, wire is this earth, uh, this ground wire. Um, if that's not there, it won't work. Uh, look, any questions, leave it below and uh, what I'll do next time on the next video is we'll wire this up, which I've made ready to connect in place of the plug here and use that to connect into the inputs on the DS64 and then we'll pull up JMRI and, and see that the LocoNet messages from the block detection section are being received by, uh, by LocoNet and made available if you need it for signaling. Any questions leave it below. Like, subscribe, thanks for watching.